So good morning, everyone. Or depending on where you are in the world, maybe it's good afternoon or good evening or possibly even good night. I am so excited to be here today. I am here to welcome all of you to our 2021 spring virtual graduation ceremony that we are hosting on behalf of the School of Education here at the University of Pittsburgh. I am Valerie Kenlock. I am your Renee and Richard Goldman Endowed Dean of our School of Education and Professor. And it just brings me joy to welcome you to our virtual ceremony as we celebrate the class of 2021. And as we recognize their many accomplishments and achievements, particularly doing what was a most difficult year for everyone across the globe. I am thrilled, I am delighted to be here. And I know that so many of you from our students, our families, friends, and faculty and staff are here with us doing this program. And so from me to you, I offer you my thanks for joining us on the first Sunday in the month of May. It's May, everyone, it is finally May. And so under different circumstances and at the beginning of our school's graduation ceremonies, I, that would typically be in person, I would always pause and I would ask everyone to join me in taking a breath, to breathe, to reflect on where we are in this very moment and to be present, to be whole, and to be thankful that we are here celebrating the accomplishments of our grad students. And after I ask us to pause and all take a breath collectively, then I would look into the audience and I would see so many of familiar faces and unfamiliar faces gathered in the Pitts Fitzgerald Field House. And I would say something about how beautiful it is to see your faces and to know that you are here to celebrate our graduates with smiles and with just times of rejoice. This is a joyous occasion. And then I would ask all of us to stand if we were able to do so. And somehow I would ask families and friends, would you please stand if you're able to do so and let's actually honor you because it's important for you to be recognized in this journey that our students go through as they are seeking to get a degree, whether it's a certificate, a bachelor's, a master's, or a doctorate. We are here because of our families and our friends and the people who feed into us to ensure that we have opportunities to breathe, to do the work that we are doing, and to be successful in doing that work. We would applaud our families and friends. And then I possibly would say, can all of our faculty and staff who are present stand up? And we would recognize you because without our faculty and staff in our School of Education, this work would not be possible. The work of gathering information to ensure that our graduates are processed with their paperwork in the system, the ways in which we think about teaching and learning and leading, those things would not be possible without our faculty and staff. And so we would also have a moment to thank you. And on this occasion, I would also say, everyone graduating in the spring class of 2021, would you please stand? And I would honor you. I would recognize your hard work. I would recognize the sacrifices that you have made to be students in our School of Education. And I would recognize where you are in this particular journey. And so, because we are not in person, I still wanna take this moment to say thank you our graduates, thank you our families and our friends, and thank you faculty and staff in the School of Education. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for always showing up. Thank you for always supporting our graduates. And thank you for always going the extra mile to ensure that this very moment that we find ourselves in today actually happened and it has happened. We are here. Thank you, graduates. You have made it to this point and I think that you have made it to this point with the love and support of others, a community of people who will always root for you. Since we're virtual, however, I really can't see anyone except for myself. I can't even see you, but let me just say this. I do believe that many of you are still smiling. Many of you are still present. Many of you, or all of you, I should say, are proud and you should be given a moment where we can say thank you from the School of Education. Our graduates have definitely accomplished a lot and they have accomplished a lot during extremely difficult times. Today, 
we have approximately 300 students who are receiving their certificates, bachelor's, master's, and or doctorate degrees. And so to our graduates, I say that this very moment is a culmination of your hard work and your perseverance. This moment is a milestone in your journey to continue to be the leaders that you are in education, in health, in human development, in schools, in communities across the world. You are leaders who continue to change people's lives for the better, and you help to improve all of the places and spaces where learning happens. I will say this on a personal note, as your Dean of the School of Education, I am honored to say that you are graduating from our school. And it brings me joy to know that I am so fortunate enough to be able to moderate this graduation ceremony and to know that our graduates continue to do the work that we know we should be doing in the world. So thank you. You have done this important work and that work I believe will continue on even beyond today. I am thrilled to follow your careers and to see where this journey takes you next. So I wanna just begin our program and I wanna begin by introducing our first speaker, Dr. Jerry Longo. Jerry Longo is the president of our School of Education's Alumni Society. Importantly, he is a retired educator whose education has spanned over 40 years. He is the former superintendent of Quaker Valley and Steel Valley School Districts. And in 1997, Dr. Longo received the Pennsylvania Superintendent of the Year Award. He is also a two-time alumnus of our school. Dr. Longo earned his doctorate in education administration in 1981 and his master's of education and secondary education with an emphasis on writing and literature in 1968. Jerry Longo has been a contributing member of our School of Education community for a number of years. I met Jerry when I first arrived here as Dean in 2017, and he welcomed me into various groups, including the Superintendent's Forum, which he directed and he continues to direct. It is an honor to work alongside Jerry and to have him as our president of our Alumni Society. And so I am going to ask Dr. Longo to come on screen, to unmute yourself, and to offer a few words to our graduates and our community. Thank you, Dean Kinlock. As president of the School of Education's Alumni Society, I'm pleased to welcome you to our society. You are now a member of a group that is 32,000 strong. As an alumnus of our School of Education, you are connected to a community that is leading and transforming the field of education. As a former professor in the school-wide Doctor of Education program, I recognize many of you in this graduation class and can testify to your dedication and passion for our profession. Given the challenges of the past year, you have demonstrated a resilience that will serve our communities for decades. As a fellow alumnus of the University of Pittsburgh School of Education, I entreat you to use your talents to lead and innovate, to build and inspire, to understand and care. Take advantage of the special events, publications, and other alumni services that our school offers. Stay connected to the university and each other through our University Alumni Association. The Pitt Alumni Association provides programs, sponsors, events, and volunteers So thank you. Congratulations from the Alumni Society. We appreciate everything that you've done and will accomplish in future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Longo. It's always nice to see you. And it is extremely um, my pleasure to be able to work with you within the Alumni Society, given that you are our president and you have been a faculty member in the School of Education. So thank you for welcoming our graduates into our School of Education Alumni Society. To our new graduates, please take advantage of what Dr. Longo mentioned 
And please feel free to rely on the many wonderful opportunities that are available to our alumni through our School of Education, but also through the University of Pittsburgh. So in the next part of our program, we are now going to hear from our student speakers who are representing the class of 2021. We have an undergraduate student speaker and we also have a graduate student speaker, both of whom were selected by a School of Education committee following a very competitive review process. They will now offer a few brief words of encouragement and reflection to their classmates. And so I have two students who have graciously agreed and accepted the invitation to speak with us today. So first, we have Ms. Ini Oluha Ogun Shamowo, who is going to speak with us. She earned her bachelor in science degree in exercise science from our School of Education. As a student, she has completed several valuable internship opportunities. She worked in the Carnegie Mellon University sports conditioning departments where she coached athletes on exercise movements in their respective sports. She also completed a shadowing experience at a physical therapy office in her hometown, in her hometown of Waldorf, Maryland. And this fall, she is planning to attend a graduate program in physical therapy at Arcadia University. Would you please join me in welcoming one of our students to speak with us today. Please get on camera and unmute yourself. Thank you so much, Dr. Kinlock, Dean Kinlock. <laughs> Thank you so much to the School of Education for this opportunity to speak to this amazing group of people. First, thank you, Jesus, for bringing me through four years of college because you know there are countless times I should have failed a class, a responsibility, or even a friend, but you had mercy on me and my flaws. My closest friends and family can attest to the fact that me graduating with honors was a struggle. <laughs> and I know it was you who strengthened my mind, body, and spirit. To my family, friends, peers, professors and lecturers, especially those in the health and fitness activity program, <laughs> my advisor, my supervisors, as well as the numerous allies and cheerleaders in between, I want to sincerely thank you for your support, patience, sacrifice, and unconditional love that has helped to bring me this far. The list of names is literally way too long to include. So if you have gave your time to me, in some way, just know that you are so much appreciated. Speaking of thanks, you can either choose to count your blessings in the midst of these difficult times, or you can allow these times to wear you down to your core. You can either wake up each morning being grateful to be alive during a pandemic, or you can allow negativity to prevent you from making moves to achieve any goals you have in your life. I, like many of you, am extremely glad to be finishing this roller coaster called college. But now is the time to look to the future before us. Whether you are working, taking a gap year, or choosing to pursue more school, yay, <laughs> it's inevitable that you will face difficult situations and people. And at that moment, when you were exposed to said difficulties, it's important to remember the value that you set for yourself. This reminds me of a time that I went to the Carnegie Museum of Natural History and saw the numerous rocks and gemstones on display. There were some gemstones I already knew about and there are others I was learning about for the first time. However, what made them all similar was the high value the museum had placed on each stone. So much so that each stone was protected by a glass enclosure, allowing you to view it from the outside but preventing you from accessing it on the inside. We should see ourselves as precious gemstones and protect our mind and body from being devalued by those who don't see our worth. Sure. Allow them to admire your success and achievements from the outside, but protect your heart and mind from those who will not respect the gem that you are. You are achieved, you are necessary, and you have something the world needs that only you can give. Always remember that as you pursue your dreams. It only took me my whole life <laughs> to realize that for myself. God bless you all and hail the pit. Thank you so much, y'all. Ah, thank you for those wonderful words. And if you can just come back on screen for a quick second here, you know, I never stick to script. So if you can, I just want to thank you um, from, you know, your dean to you for everything that you have accomplished and that you will continue to accomplish. You know, I was listening to your speech and you talked about we should see ourselves as gemstones. 
And I'm gonna say that I hope you will continue to see yourself as a gem because you are. You have exceeded expectations. You have succeeded what you have come here to do. And I just wanna say, unfortunately, we are not in person where I can just give you a great big hug of congratulations, but please know that I am going to continue to follow your career. I am excited for what you have done in the School of Education, and I'm going to be rooting for you from afar. If ever you need anything, please contact me, but congratulations and thank you for being a student speaker today. So we are going to continue and we are going to now hear from another of our students and her name is Ashley, Ashley Pop. Ashley is a graduate of our school's combined accelerated studies and education program or what we often refer to as CASE, C-A-S-E. Last year, she earned her bachelor's degree in applied developmental psychology with a certificate in American Sign Language. And this year, she earned her master's degree in instruction and learning. And as part of her program, she became a Pennsylvania certified teacher in pre-K through four and in special education pre-K through eight. Ashley has completed several valuable student teaching placements in elementary education and in special education. She has also studied abroad in London. Post-graduation, Ashley will be working as a building substitute teacher in the Fox Chapel School District for the remainder of the school year. So please join me in welcoming our second speaker, Ms. Ashley Pop. Thank you so much, Dean Kinlock. Hello, everyone. Congratulations. We did it. We have all worked extremely hard to be here today. It has been a year unlike any other. How many times have we heard that? This year has not been like any other. While it is true, I, for one, am very much ready to look forward. Although I can't say no good came out of the past year. In many ways, we have pushed back on what this year has brought us. We pushed to keep educating our students, giving them our 100% best, even when we weren't feeling our 100% best. We were determined to push back on the challenges of finishing college virtually, but here we are still getting our degrees. We have pushed back against the racism and injustices embedded within our society through the Black Lives Matter movement and the Stop Asian Hate movement. While those fights are long from being over, we will continue to push back. Dean Kinlock has written a new mission statement for the School of Education. It writes, at our school, we ignite learning. We commit to educational equity. We innovate and agitate. We disrupt and transform an equitable education structures. Those are powerful words, agitate, disrupt, transform. Luckily for us, Pitt has taught us exactly how to do that. Not only are our programs designed with social justice at the center, we also have professors sharing articles and resources to empower us to become socially minded educators and citizens. I cannot think of a better group of people to continue this movement towards change than the graduates with, graduates with me here today. Despite this pandemic and the multitude of challenges we face during it, we have created a strong network of support. Personally, I joined the School of Education through the CASE program where I met 28 of the most caring, passionate educators who quickly became like my family. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the individuals involved in the CASE program because they are some of the best people I have ever known, and I'm sure others can relate to these stories within their own programs. Within the CASE program, you have professors like Dr. Katrina Bartow-Jacobs, who will bring you tea in the middle of class because she knows you've been fighting a cold all week. You have professors like Lugene Calderon, who always has the perfect children's book in mind for any situation. You have kind souls like Anna Arlotta Guerrero, and Amy Sursik, our program advisors, who let you rant, cry, or both, because they know you just need someone to listen. You have classmates who create group chats for sharing instructional materials, job interview advice, and just their overall mutual exhaustion that comes from teaching and taking classes at the same time. My point is, as soon-to-be alumni of the University of Pittsburgh, you have people in your corner who are ready to support you in any way they can. You have people who are ready to help you push back, agitate, disrupt, and transform. And that doesn't stop just because we are graduating. 
With this community of educators, we are more prepared than ever to start those meaningful, equity-focused conversations with our students and colleagues. We are ready to agitate, disrupt, and transform inequitable systems. As our beloved Mr. Rogers once said, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. Well, when envisioning the class of 2021, all I see are helpers ready to push back and make this world an equitable place. So let's get started. Thank you. Ashley, let me just say thank you for your words. How beautiful. There's something that you said, I was sitting here listening to you and something that you said in reference to, uh, we have kind souls in the School of Education. We have faculty members who will bring you a cup of tea like Katrina and I can see her doing that. Or we have other people who will let you cry. You know, let me just say this to you. As much as we have kind souls in the School of Education and we do, we have kind souls. We have faculty and staff who will rise to the occasion. I will extend that to you as well. I, I will say that as much as we have kind faculty and staff, you are indeed one of those kind souls. You have taken us up on this opportunity to share here at our graduation ceremony, but you've also taken us up on the opportunity to become an educator. And for that, I will continue to cheer you on and to root for you. So thank you so very much for your words and hail to Pitt. So thank you, Ashley, for your wonderful remarks. And at this time, I am now delighted to introduce to you our alumni graduation speaker. And so every year for every commencement we have in the School of Education, we invite, we invite someone to be our commencement speaker. It's someone who has reached a level of accomplishment, who has wisdom, who has this impeccable sense of humor, at least I think. And it is someone who gives a message to our graduates that draws on their experiences in the field of education. Today, it is my honor to welcome Dr. Elaine M. Allen to present our commencement address today. And I'm gonna to introduce Dr. Allen. And as I do, um, I'd like for you to come join me on camera so that I could, I could share this with you and with everyone else. So if you can, thank you, there you are. It is wonderful to see you and it is wonderful that you have taken us up on this opportunity to be our commencement speaker. Let me just say a few brief words about you that you already know, but so everyone else could also know. Dr. Allen, first of all, is a graduate of the School of Education at the University of Pittsburgh. And currently she is Associate Dean for Diversity, Equity and Inclusion in the College of Engineering at Carnegie Mellon University. She is committed to creating a welcoming culture where the entire community can thrive. I know Dr. Allen as an educator who has dedicated her entire life's work to equity, justice and innovation. I know Dr. Allen as a human being who seeks to create opportunities for individuals from various groups, particularly groups that are historically marginalized from the STEM fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. As I said earlier, Dr. Allen is um, a two-time alum of our School of Education. She earned her Master of Education in 1993 and her Doctor of Education in 2017. She also holds a degree in physics education from Lincoln University, which is a historically black college, just like the one that I graduated from. Yes, and it was the first, it is the first historically black college in the United States. Prior to joining Carnegie Mellon University, she worked for Pitt's Swanson School of Engineering, where she made a huge impact on efforts to recruit, retain, and let me add in, support students of color. She is also a former high school physics teacher. And let me, let me offer this. Dr. Allen is an amazing human being. If I have never said this to you, let me publicly say this now. You are beyond amazing. You are the kind of human being who cultivates people and you pour love and energy into every single person you meet. And so when it was an opportunity for us to say, who will be our commencement speaker? Dr. Elaine Allen, 
there was no question that we wanted to invite you. And it just brings me joy to know that when I first came here, I had the pleasure of graduating you. And now I'm going to have the pleasure of introducing you as our commencement speaker. So Dr. Elaine Allen, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Dean Kenlock. And please don't get me teared up before I start speaking. Um, I really appreciate you and just how you have um, helped to transform the School of Education. Some of the things that were, and I know this is off script, so I'll go to script. But some of the things that were, um, we longed for you've put in place. And so thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for um, finding all the partners you have within the college and, and just moving it forward. Um, but I'd like to congratulate the class of 2021. Um, this weekend is a time of celebration and I'm honored to be a part of it. I'm especially proud of you because I know that your road to graduation required you to juggle so many things, group projects, papers, exams, life responsibilities, as well as multiple pandemics. So as you come to the end of this milestone, I would like to share three points of advice while telling you a bit about my personal experiences. One, point number one, share your story with others by highlighting your unique characteristics. And those characteristics invite other people in. So when I was a high school student, I participated in a local pre-college program. One day during a class discussion about the educational levels of our parents, which is strange, but it happened. My friend Lisa shared that her mother had a PhD. As a teenage black girl who would be a first generation college graduate, Hearing that a black woman had achieved this goal inspired and motivated me. So I ask you, who can you inspire by sharing your story and your background? Number two, always remember your why. This is huge. Think back to when you first applied to school and wrote a personal essay or a statement of purpose. What did you commit to accomplish once you completed this degree? Now is the time for you to step into that purpose. Let it be your North Star that guides you through the ups and downs of your professional journey. As a college student, I changed my major from engineering to education after working as a tutor counselor for the Upward Bound program, a federally funded pre-college program that requires all its participants to be either from a low income family or a potential first generation college student. At the time, I realized my ability to connect with students and help them see their greatness. When applying to graduate school, I wrote about the desire to motivate students to find their purpose. In February, I transitioned to a new position. Um, and since then, I've, since that, I made um, the change during a pandemic, which is also hard. And so I had to connect to my new professional community virtually. So since my start date, I've attended numerous meetings, met new colleagues, took on many projects, all with the purpose of making my new academic community, the Carnegie Mellon University College of Engineering, a place where everyone can thrive. While I continue connecting with faculty and staff, the conversations that stand out the most are my talks with students because they are enthusiastic, passionate, and ready to change the world, even when they are unsure of themselves. In the past, two, in the past month, I met two students, a Latina undergraduate, and a black male graduate student, both in engineering, and they reminded me of my why. They are both brilliant individuals trying to figure out their place in the engineering world. They shared their challenging experiences and their interests, and I listened, offered advice, and presented opportunities to fuel their interests. By the end of our conversations, I was quickly reminded that I accepted my new role because I am called to open doors for individuals who are often underestimated or overlooked. So I ask you, what is your why? Number three, build and maintain a diverse and supportive professional network. Who are the classmates that work with you on group projects and presentations? Ashley talked a lot about that. Who challenged you to broaden your perspective or deepen your understanding? Who supported you to the finish line? At a time when the world is increasingly divided because of differences, it is even more important for us as educators to model connection. In one of my first doctoral classes, I was in a group with a classmate named Mike. I will keep his last name private. Mike and I tended to be on two different sides of the political spectrum in most conversations. However, after some headbutting, we committed to learning from one another. And by the end of the course, we have become friends and professional advocates of one another. Another example of 
My Pit Networks is the Alliance of Urban Scholars, or all of us, a study group made up of students and faculty committed to improving urban education. This group not only helped me to complete my doctoral degree, but it continues to be a supportive network for me. Members of this family, as I call it, have shared professional resources, reviewed conference submissions, collaborated on projects, and walked together through personal challenges. And we continue to support one another in achieving our professional goals. So I'd ask you, do you have a diverse and supportive professional network? So in closing, I want to congratulate you once again on your graduation and remind you to share your story, remember your why, and build a supportive and diverse professional network. Following this advice will enable you to live out your purpose and bring much needed change to our world. Thank you so much for listening and hail to Pitt. Dr. Allen, thank you so much for those words. A few things that I took from you and you know, I do this because I, I see myself as an educator, but also as a listener. And I can never move on without actually feeding back into people what they have fed to us. And so a few things that I heard you say, be a North Star and commit to being a North Star. Um, see your greatness and seeing your greatness, particularly when or if other people might not, always know that you are great and that you have a lot to give. There's also that important point that you just mentioned in terms of you met someone whose first name might be Mike, we think, <laughs> <laughs> and how you all were on different sides. However, the two of you committed to learning from each other. And part of that learning requires us to listen to the other side, to listen to multiple perspectives and to somehow figuring out ways to be in support of each other. And then finally, you talked about having a network you talked about telling your stories and understanding the why of why we are here. And I think that you are such a good example of someone who tells her stories, who has a sense of purpose and beyond having a sense of purpose, you also understand how other people are already great. And we are here to make sure that they see their greatness, they walk in it, and they continue to inspire themselves and each other. And you have inspired me, you continue to inspire me, and I do the work that I do as Dean of the School of Education because of people who walk into my life and you are one of them. And so thank you for all that you do. Thank you for being here and thank you for offering those words to our spring 2021 graduates. And actually not just to the spring graduates, to the entire class of 2021. So Dr. Allen, from me to you, thank you for those words. And so at this time, um, I don't know how to follow Dr. Allen, but at this time, I want to offer just a, free, a, a few brief words to our class of 2021. And let me be clear, class of 2021, class of 2021, this has been a hard year. And so before I talk about the year it has been, I wanna center families and friends and graduates yet again. I know I did this at the very beginning of our commencement activities here today, but I always have to start again by acknowledging the families and friends of our graduates in order for any of us to accomplish our dreams, to do the work that we do, we must have a community of people who will support us. And if we don't, my hope is that we will one day find a community of people who will support our dreams, our imaginations, our wildest ambitions, even if other people don't really understand why it is that we wanna do what we wanna to do to impact the world productively and positively. My hope is that we will be a community of people supporting each other. So to our families and our friends who have gathered here virtually with us today, thank you, thank you, and thank you. I thank you for also being a positive presence in the lives of our graduates. You know, it's my belief that we have to have people who believe in us. We have to have people who encourage us, who support us, who will support us even when you might be frustrated and you might not fully understand what it is that we are trying to do. But to have that type of love, to have that type of community and that type of support to push us forward, to be as successful as we can be in this world, for that, I am thankful family, friends, and indeed to our faculty and staff in the School of Education, let me again say this. Our four years together haven't always been the easiest, but it's been so productive. It might not have always been met with laughter, 
but I hope it's always been met with kindness and compassion. And our faculty and staff in our School of Education continue to push and to ensure that our graduates, in fact, all of our students are provided opportunities to achieve, to be successful and to give back to other people. So in addition to our family and friends who are gathered here today, I also acknowledge yet again, our faculty and staff. You know, I wouldn't be your Dean if I didn't do what I'm gonna do next. And if you know me, then you know what I'm going to do next is to talk about our mission vision in the School of Education. You know, I read these words from our mission vision at the start of every school event and school meeting that we have, because I believe that this mission vision embodies who we are, who we seek to become, and how we seek to accomplish the work that we are committed to accomplishing. And so for the class of 2021, please indulge me as I read these words that represents our mission vision for the School of Education here at the University of Pittsburgh. And if you know it, you can read it wherever you are as well. We ignite learning. We strive for well being for all. We commit to student, family, and community success. We commit to educational equity. We advocate. We work for justice. We cultivate relationships. We forge engaged partnerships. We collaborate. We learn with and from communities. We innovate. And as Ashley said, we agitate. We pursue and produce knowledge. We research. We disrupt and transform in equitable educational structures. We approach learning as intertwined with health, wellness, and human development. We address how national, global, social, and technological change impacts learning. We shape practice and policy. We teach with and for dignity. We think, we dream, we lead with integrity. We are the School of Education at the University of Pittsburgh. And based on that mission vision, I wanna offer a few words to our graduates. I wanna say this, you are poised to continue the, the work that you have been doing to start the next chapter in your journey as graduates. And wherever that chapter leads you, we will be following, we will be watching, and we will be supporting. But before that journey continues after today, I wanna offer this brief message related to themes of challenges and adversity and how these experiences have shaped you, I hope, in very unique ways, in ways that have shaped faculty, staff, and students in our School of Education and even beyond. Because I can assure you that there will be more challenges that we all confront later in our lives, in the course of our work, in our interactions with other people, and we have to understand how challenges, I hope, make us even stronger. I know that you, have faced a very challenging and unusual pathway to this graduation on this day, the world events of 2020. And we can go all the way back to decades and decades ago, but if we think about the events of 2020, which have continued into this year of 2021, they have tested all of us. They have left some of us, many of us in fact, with the painful loss of loved ones and deeply rooted traumas that we will continue to cope with and confront for so many years. And I pause here to acknowledge all of the lives lost because of this global pandemic and because of other inequities and inequalities in the world. And however, our graduates have faced down these challenges and you have grown substantially. You continue to display remarkable adaptability you have thought about the ways in which you seek to continue to contribute to this world, how you continue to develop an ethos of ingenuity through this entire experiences. Believe me, when I say that these traits will serve you well in your careers and lives as you become leaders in education and health and human development and wellness, believe me, they will. And in addition to understanding the things that we have experienced from 2020 into 2021, I also must talk about the painful reality that we have all experienced with having to, needing to, 
must being able to reckon with racial injustice in this country. Of course, this reckoning was sparked not just a year ago, but it became hyper visible a year ago with the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And as killing continued such urgent conversations that have been happening for years and years in this world about racial inequity, injustice, inequality, and it's been made more pervasive because of this reality that continues to linger. We have to think about anti-racist practices in every aspect of our society. And as our commencement speaker, Dr. Allen referenced, how is it that we learn to work with each other even in the face of our differences? How do we learn? How do we listen? And how do we demonstrate compassion as we seek to live in a better world and leave a better world for those yet to be here? With all of these things, I am still convinced that our students, especially our students graduating today, you have demonstrated powerful ways of engaging in equity and justice. You have studied, you have completed internships, you have completed community engaged projects. You have completed assignments in your classes and you have stood against every inequity in order to pursue your dreams and to work as a community in this world. You have also demonstrated a deep commitment in doing the important, necessary and very productive work of wrestling with the history of the pain and trauma endured by so many people in this country and in this world. And you have continued to determine ways to intervene in order to shape a future that is more equitable, just, engaging, justice-driven, and dare I say loving for each and every person. And for that, <laughs> I could not be more moved. You know, finally, I want to also say that we have students who are in the School of Education. All of our students pursue these goals and dreams, and it is my hope that they will always be supported to do the work that their souls are meant to do, that they come into our School of Education wanting to do, and they are supported to do. We have wonderful students, and I want to recognize just a few of them. You know, we have the work of, Demo, of Dr. Emily Howe, who is a graduate of our PhD program in learning sciences and policy. And she has written a dissertation under the advisement of Dr. Rip Carenti. And her dissertation is titled, D Reconstructing the Ideological Terrain in Social Justice Education. I wanna also recognize the work of Dr. Christina Scanlon, a graduate of our PhD in Applied Developmental Psychology program. Her dissertation, is it is relevant particularly to the times in which we live. It's titled Social Support in Unprecedented Times, an examination of low-income adolescents' stress, social supports, and effect during and before the coronavirus pandemic. And she was advised by, by our very own Dr. Heather Bachman. There's so many projects, so many dissertations, so many theses. Um, let me also recognize another, the work of Dr. Denise La Rosa, a graduate of our EDD program. Her dissertation was titled, Coaching Elementary Educators, Culturally Sustaining Teaching. And this work is what she draws on in her current role as Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion at the Ellis School. She was advised by, by our very own Professor Emily Rainey. And so on behalf of our School of Education, and particularly the Dean's Office. I wanna thank all of our graduates, particularly the ones who I've mentioned today, and additionally, the ones who I have not mentioned, but who continue to stand firm, understanding that this work is important. The work that we do in this school of education, but also across the various communities in which we find ourselves is extremely important. What Dr. Allen referenced about that North Star, find it. What she referenced in terms of stories and storytelling, engage in it, exchange stories, understand how your story about your life, but your life as interconnected with other people's lives, that we have to continue to understand the importance of our stories, our stories in this world, 
our stories in relation to our growth and the things that we seek to give back to communities and to other people. And so on behalf of our entire School of Education community, I am proud of our graduates I am thankful to be here as your Dean. I am thankful to our families and friends, to our faculty and staffs, staff members, and to our other peers who are here or who might not be here today. It has been a pleasure to be your Dean. It is continuing to, under, it is continuing to show me how to understand the productive work that should happen when we commit ourselves to working in community with other people. So thank you, and I do hope that today is the beginning of the continued progression of your work in this world. I can continue to talk on and on, but I want to refer back to our graduates. Our graduates are here today and we are honoring them. And this is the time that we've been waiting for. It is the time for us to recognize our graduating students by name. And it's important that we publicly name and celebrate our graduates because they have displayed so much hard work, determination, resiliency, and perseverance. You are amazing human beings. I congratulate all of you. And I am honored to present to everyone our School of Education class of 2021. To recognize our graduates, we will now play a video with the names of our graduating students. Candidates for the Bachelor of Science, Julianne Alfera, Daniela Amwafo Danqua, Ria Baji, Ciara Bailey, Adriana Baker, Hobie Bosignor, Ethan Becker, Luke Benshoff, Trung Bui, Nathaniel Bungard, Shirley Biremo, Blake Carlton, Gina Catondo, Miranda Sequera, Giabe Chen, Natalie Christopher, Yenchen Chu, Lucy Korik, Sienna Crosby, Cecilia Daugherty, Amara Davis, Haley DeLong, Caitlin DeRoche, Kristen DiGiacomo, Elias Dimitrikopoulos, Jeremy Derman, Raphael Dimmick, Elizabeth Erline, Allison Einhorn, Adam Ekis, Daria Fratangeli, Michael Fricke, Jacob Ginsberg, Jessica Jafrida, Mary Gernovich, Elsa Hansen Shibgins, John Haberty, Courtney Hughes, Anne Marie Jacob, Sadie Jin, Mara Keen, Jessica Kiefer, Nina Kashanowitz, Casey Kohlmeyer, Libby Korber, Mia Krausel, Nicole Lolly, Camille Lacrone, Charles Lee, Lee Levi, Courtney Lewis, Yan Chen Lui, Alyssa Longo, Anthony Lapresti, Gabrielle Martin, Amelia Marks, Sophia McCullough, Kara McFerrin, Brittany McIntosh, Haley Metcalf, Anna Minio, Olga Moken, Anna Moser, Noah Moser, David Mowry, Nick Nikachenko, Michaela O'Byrne, Inilua Agunshimowo, Brianna Phillips, Emily Phillips, Emma Potter, George Ruddy, Tara Rustam, Santina Schofield, Mariana Shulo, Maggie Scovati, Caroline Siri, Maggie Slavin, Georgia Smine, Drew Smith, Samantha Smith, Benjamin Snyder, Emily Sovak, Connor Stevens, Ashlyn Strathman, Cassidy Sundy, Sigma Takeuchi, Lindsay Thompson, Louise Thompson, Phoebe Thornberry, Alexandra Tracy, Sierra Vogel, Rebecca Wheeler, Jonathan Wicker, Elizabeth Williams, Ashley Wilson. Candidates for certificates, Kate Barnes, Aaron Burgeon, Krista Bramer, Adrian Burfield, Carly Krastowski, Jamie Cranmer, Meredith Crocker, Patricia Deschenzo, Mackenzie Durlam, Carly Dukovich, Robert Eastwood, Kelsey Edmonds Tyndall, Giovanna Guarnieri, Virginia Hazelou, Andrew Henry, Nicole Homich, Mark Klingner, Taylor Looney, Aaron Moore, Russell Patterson, Jacob Sobel, 
Taylor Stumbo. Candidates for the Master of Arts, Caitlin Bodnar, David Manning. Candidates for the Master of Arts in Teaching, Christopher Abbott, Cameron Barnett, Craig Bloxage, Joshua Bowers, Amy Bray, Casey Edwards, Carl Foncella, Carly Frank, Hannah Greer, Frederick Tyre, Nicholas Hankala, Jacob Kennedy, Melinda Condisco, Christopher Kovalik, Allison Krayak, Jacob Lord, Pilar Martinez, Christina McCabe, Alex Mears, Ryan Ott, Keegan Phillips, Weston Phillips, Bryce Potts, Caroline Rapala, Samantha Robbins, Samantha Robertson, Thomas Schrumbeck, Kristen Shannon, Alexandra Shirley, Rebecca Terullo, Matthew Thomas, Stephen Thomas, Connor Thompson, Marlena Tosh, Daniel Twig, Kurt Vosshoins, Blaine Ward, Benjamin Whitford, Yi Yu. Candidates for the Master of Education, Alfonso Lily Amuda Amalanayagam, Leah Amoroso, Emily Baranek, Hannah Berg, Bogoswaba Blazewick, Candace Bolger, Audrey Bollinger, Eleni Brown, Julia Buss, Kiana Cash, Kaylee Caulfield, Tanjao Chen, Krista Christian, Taylor Cole, Isabel Crane, Mark Craven, Patricia Jashenzo, Carly Dukovic, Robert Eastwood, Julia Elis, David Gadala, Abby Gifford, Jessica Goldberg, Lauren Greb, Dana Grossi, Mariana Gutierrez, Yuxiao Han, Chelsea Hancock, Christy Hay, Isabel Heistand, Tori Hoshendoner, Stacy Hughes, Megan Hugo, Catherine Ikes, Amelia Jaffe, Mercy Jamatia, Jaskia Jones, Aaron Kalbach, Jenny Kaufman, Mark Killinger, Mark Klinger, Fan Yi Kong, Brittany Larkin, Janice Lee, Michael Lewis, Jia Yu Li, Chen Liang, Ji Hang Liao, Linnea Lombardi, Taylor Looney, Roger Lai, Michaela Mahoney, Danielle Manross, Simeon McCray, Margaret McMahon, Sarah McSweeney, Madeline Minahan, Thomas Morin, Amanda Nelson, Susanna Nikas, Savannah Null, Anju O, oh, Yatunde Olari, Carla Perlestein, Ashley Pop, Laura Prisbilla, Jia Yi Chan, Taylor Rehach, Hope Rice, Sophia Sansoni, Carly Schwab, Eamon Sheehan, Cooper Sheely, Wen Wen Shi, Caitlin Shrev, Amanda Sims, Aaron Simonson, Lauren Skillinge, Anita Somer, Hilary Spevik, Michaela Swagger, Jolyn Thompson, Brendan Urso, Paige Weaver, William Wesley, Timothy Witensky, Jessica Wood, Monica Yang, Devin Yepsuga, Michael Dealer. Candidates for the Master of Science. Justine Berry, Allison Quelo, Jamie Cranmer, Hannah Christofano, Taylor Crosby, Emily Delanoit, Rachel Denon, Melanie Flores, Caroline Foster, Ruth Gonzalez, Maureen Hennigan, Christine Jaron, Carrie Judy, Michelle Nichols, Kara Palicelli, Hannah Phillips, Rachel Quisenberry, Sophie Shaw, Giovanna Stevens, Jordan Stokes James, Sandy Tai, Kyle Ward, Caitlin Wolf, Audrey Wong. Candidates for the Doctorate of Education Christian Alberto, Mary Elias, Amy Bridger, Mario Brown, Victoria Causer, Sarah Cullen, Paula Davis, Rachel Faber, Ovaska, Catherine Babo, Patricia Finn, Lauren Freeman, Thomas Grau, Taylor Guido, Lindsay Hopkins Hall, Shanae Jeffrey, Andrew Johnson, Toya Jones, Jennifer Casimer, Elizabeth Klein, Lindsay Klausnitzer, Lauren Cowhut, James Costra, Anna Lama, Denise LaRosa, 
Tracy Larson, Jamie Luzbrink, Lauren Medea, David Malone, Gina Matuzzi, Valeria McCrary, Christy McGuire, Sean McQuillan, Michelle Miner, Kiara Montera, Lorian Moyer, Emily Murphy, Megan Nelson, Lindsay Onifer, Beata Pasek, Dennis Perkins, Catherine Pope, John Radzilowicz, Msini Rajkapal, Tony Richard, Mark Ross, Nathaniel Sams, Jamie Schmidt, Ryan Scott, Christina Seals, Joseph Sebastian, Amber Schneider, Cheryl Sorensen, Lisa Stahl, Jenna Stiles, Joel Thompson, Stephen Turquato, Wen Craig Eram, Sherry Vereen Thomas, Crystal Watkins, Rhonda White, Ben Wilson, Sarah Wong, Lauren Wright, Todd Yancey, Zachary Zabraski. Candidates for the Doctorate of Philosophy Sharon Colvin, Emily Howe, Afton Kirk Johnson, Che Wei Li, Rodolfo Vega. How wonderful to recognize all of our students and to have this opportunity to be in community with each and every one of you. So congratulations again to the class of 2021. You are officially graduates of our School of Education at the University of Pittsburgh. Congratulations, congratulations. In fact, um, before we conclude, I wanna actually do this. I want some of our faculty and staff on this Zoom who I know are just aching to get on screen to say a few words to our graduates to actually help me congratulate each and every one of you. And I think I'm gonna start by asking Dr. Jill Perry to come on screen. And this is the thing, once you are on screen, after you speak, please stay on screen and just mute yourself. And at the very end, I'm gonna ask all of those folks who I'm calling on to actually just at the end say congratulations. So Jill Perry, I'm turning it over to you for now. Thank you, Dean Kinlock, it's so nice to see you. I just wanna say congratulations to all of our 2021 graduates and a huge shout out to our higher education students and our EDD students. You all trusted the process, you persevered, and you earn this honor. We are so proud of you and who you have become. And we say, go forth and inspire others. Thank you. Ah, uh, Thank you, Dr. Perry. And it is really great to see you as well. I am going to ask Denise Morin to come on screen. Graduates, <laughs> I always love graduation day when all of the students are so happy and smiling and laughing. This year has been so challenging in so many ways, but you did it. We as a school are so proud of you. Thank you and hail the pit. Thank you, Denise. It is always great to see you as well. Shedrick McClendon, are you here? Come on screen. Yes, I'm here, Dean Kenlock. Thank you. Well, graduates, today's the day that we celebrate you and all of your hard work and all of your major accomplishments. So remember that the best is yet to come. Congratulations and farewell. Thank you, Shedrick. Max Schuster, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Thank you, Dean Kinlock. Um, congratulations and special shout out to our amazing 2021 higher education grads. The faculty and I are so proud of you and we know that you are going to be continuing to positively shape the lives of today's college students. Thank you for letting us be a part of your journey and we look forward to the bright futures you have ahead of you. Congratulations again. Thank you, Max. Um, Charlene Travato. Here, I am here. 
and I can start my video. There I am. I want to say congratulations on your well-deserved success and best wishes for your next adventure to all the graduates. In Ed Leadership, congratulations. The faculty in Ed Leadership are proud of you today. Our EDD students, our masters, our certificate students, um, and we are proud of all of the students that are graduating today. But more importantly, enjoy your graduation day. Enjoy every minute of it um, and feel good about what you have accomplished. Thank you. Thank you, Charlene. Jennifer Russo, where are you? Here I am. Congratulations, 2021 School of Education graduates. Your perseverance during this challenging year is truly an inspiration. As you go forward with your careers, I wish you a lifetime of commitment to the education field, to deep and meaningful engagement with communities, and to collaborative action towards better educational systems. Thank you, Jennifer. Where is Kevin Crowley? Hey, here I am. And you have on your hat. Listen, I hope everyone at home is wearing a fancy hat too, because that's the best part of graduating. Um, but um, it is a big day. It's like a really big deal to have graduated. And um, people are talking about how the work's about to begin. And my favorite part of the mission vision, Ashley brought this up in her comments, the part about how we innovate, we agitate, we disrupt and we transform inequitable educational structures. That's a heavy lift. That's the work of a lifetime. And you know, you've learned some stuff, you've done some stuff, we've learned from you, we've been inspired by you, but now's when it really starts. So I'm just looking forward to seeing what happens, seeing what you do. You know, we can't do this without you. Um, so, so go do that stuff. Go do that work of a lifetime. Thank you, Kevin. Where is Sharon Ross? Hello, everyone. Congratulations. I just wanted to say that I am in awe of what you have been able to accomplish over these last 14 months during a global pandemic. You've made it to graduation day. You finished strong. And I am confident that if you can do this, you can literally do anything. You should feel so proud of yourselves and your achievements. I also wanted to give a special shout out to our health and physical activity and ADP graduates. It was a pleasure having you in class. I hope that you keep in touch and I'm so excited to see where you guys go from here. Thank you so much, Sharon. What about Cassie Quigley? I agree with Kevin. I hope everybody's wearing a fancy hat as well. And today um, I asked my son what I should say to you all, many of you who will be teachers for the first time. And he simply said, teachers matter. And I agree. Thank you for choosing to make a difference in young people, in the lives of young people. And it has been my true pleasure and honor to learn with you. My son did have one piece of advice for you though. Don't assign too much homework. Congratulations, the class of 2021. Thank you so much, Cassie. Where is Tanukwa Boulder? Hello, I'm right here. Thank you, Dean Kinglock. Um, it's a tough hat to follow everyone's uh, messages, but um, congratulations to the class of 2021. Uh, you did it. It's a wonderful accomplishment. And we are proud of you, as everyone else said. We're proud of your commitment to learning, your commitment to succeeding in this very challenging time. And I wish you the very best in your future endeavors. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Thank you, Tanukwa. And how about to round us out? Lori DeLele O'Connor, where are you? Here, complete with funny hat and robe. <laughs> uh, so class of 2021, we are so proud of you. Um, and you have heard so many people reference our beautiful mission vision statement. And I think you've already begun to live that. Um, in particular, innovating and agitating and of working for justice. And in my experience, you've pushed us all to do the same. So I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity to learn with you and from you um, these past years and hail to pit. 
Thank you, Lori. And so if all of our faculty, staff who just spoke could unmute yourself and we're just gonna try this. On the count of three, congratulations, graduates and hail to Pitts. Maybe can we get this? Okay, on the count of three, congratulations, graduates and hail to Pitts. One, two, three. Congratulations, congratulations. All right, we're gonna do that one more time, okay. <laughs> We're going to do that one more time for our graduates. I want you to bring as much energy and fire as possible. We're going to do this, all right? One more time. One, two, three. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Denise and Shedrick, to Jill, to Max, to Kevin, to Nuqua, Charlene, Sharon, Jennifer, Cassie, and Lori. And thank you to all of our faculty and staff and students in the School of Education. I want to welcome our graduates to our Pitt alumni family. The university has prepared a special video. And we're going to play the special video that contains the music to the Pit Fight song. And I think it's fitting since this year, you all did such a great job to push through adversity. And after we play this video, I will offer a few brief concluding remarks before we actually end. So let's play the video and then I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> So much for playing that video. It has been such a wonderful opportunity to join each and every one of you today for our virtual graduation ceremony for the class of 2021 in our School of Education here at the University of Pittsburgh. I want to thank you for being here as we, the entire School of Education community, celebrate our wonderful students who are now graduates. There are a few things I have to do because I just think that it's important to do. And that is to thank the wonderful team in the School of Education who have been working tirelessly behind the scenes to make sure that this virtual ceremony went off smoothly. They have been coordinating logistics for this event for several months. And I especially wanna thank Kyla for going above and beyond, including the reading of all of those graduates' names. And so before I conclude, um, I want to just return to a, a couple points. It was Dr. Elaine Allen who talked about stories and telling your story. And if you know me, you know I've been telling stories and I encourage people to tell their stories in order to make sense of this world, to make sense of ourselves and our relationships with other people. And so what I want to just do really quickly is to end by reading a passage from one of our graduates. He has no idea that I am even reading this. It is our very own Cameron Barnett, who just received his master's degree from our School of Education and who is also a poet and a teacher at the Falk School. And in an article that was written about Cameron, 
He actually talks about how his work focuses on two main questions. And I wanna leave this with all of us today. He says, who are we? And who are we to each other? So who are we and who are we to each other? He focuses on how portrayals of groups of people and particularly black people are often monolithic and presented from the perspective of dominant society, a perspective that leaves little room for empathy and nuance. So I wanna leave you with Cameron Barnett's words. And he says, and I quote, my belief is that stories are the binding thread of all communication. Stories are what bind us and how we create empathy, understanding and growth. He continues, as a society, we are always revising and line editing our past and present selves. And it's that point of stories and storytelling and telling our stories. And so congratulations, Cameron, on being a graduate of our school. Thank you for being the poet, the writer, the storyteller that you are. And as Cameron tells us, just as Dr. Elaine Allen tells us, we have to tell our stories in relation to who we are with each other in the world. And so thank you for joining me. This concludes the formal portion of today's ceremony. But at this time, our program faculty will begin hosting virtual reception rooms that we have organized by program areas. And I invite all of our students, families, and friends to join the reception room of your program area. The meeting room links and passwords were emailed to our graduates earlier this week. So please look for your email and then join the room that you are assigned to based on your area. We will also post a document with these reception room details into the chat box on this Zoom in the event that you do not have that email. And if you have any questions or trouble logging into your reception, then just stay on this Zoom and we will assist you. But for now, I am here to say congratulations to our graduates, class of 2021 in our School of Education. Continue to live out our mission vision and in the words of Elaine Allen and Cameron Barnett, continue to tell the stories that we are meant to tell and to live in a world of equity, justice, and humanization. Congratulations, graduates. Hail to Pitt.